Welcome back to the Sharon Jones Show. Just just getting all the information. I, I tell you, I feel like a sponge because I just be pulling out information because I'm always around the city and the people. And when you're around people, you're around people of different age groups and are different religions and different walks of life. So it's always somebody to brush past me that need something from someone else. So I just love the networking experience. I love how it's put together to, to network, to build, and to bless, and to motivate. And that's what you do. Yes. You're just building stuff mm -hmm. for other people. And, and at the same time, God is always preparing and giving you your needs. Yes. Because I know your needs have met you look awesome. Yes, thank you. you. Know? I haven't gone without. <laughs> I haven't lacked. Yes. So he's, and he's provided. Ain't that beautiful? Yes. We had an awesome God. But God. Yes. Nobody but him. Yeah. So. But you know, you went to prison and you stated that you were there <clears throat> a, 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 a year. Yes. Okay. That one year, probably, to me, listening at you, that's what really set you where you're at right now. Hmm. Had you not went. Had I not gone, you wouldn't be doing probably doing this. No, as a matter of fact, before I was even gotten into any trouble, I had already 2009. I was starting to work on this organization. Really? But it was from a complete different perspective. It was uh. from the perspective of, you got in trouble, you can't get a job. It's your fault. That's your. You know, it was lack of empathy. It was if you do this, you could do better. If you could get an education, you could do better. It can't possibly be that hard to not get a job when you have a felony. I was looking at it from a completely different perspective. Oh my. And even though nobody wants to go to prison, um, that was the place I needed to be at because right. I was in an abusive relationship. Uh. I had been threatened several times with a gun in my face oh that my. he was going to leave me stinking somewhere. Oh. So had it not been for for me being incarcerated, I truly believe I would have been dead. My God. And through the incarceration, the same people that I was putting down, I came to love. Okay. I came to understand a lot of the dynamics. Uh -huh. It's not a lot of the dynamics weren't because people just don't want to do right. Mm. There were a lot of issues going on, whether it's domestic violence abuse, whether it was mental illness, whether it was substance abuse. So it came to ponder as a lot of people when you're in active addiction, for one, and you go out and you see a person with their record saying theft, 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 it's not that they're a thief. I mean, in essence, they're a thief, but it's not because they want to do it. It's because they're feeding something else. So why incarcerate when you could be treated? Because once they get out, and, and, and it's actually happened. I was there a year, but some people would get out, and before I, could, before I left, they were coming back. Oh, my God. It's the same thing. You haven't treated the major issues. Uh. And I do believe that one of the biggest issues was not just, Sarah, that treatment, but a job. And I would hear so many people say, but if I had a job, mm. I probably would stay out of trouble. Mm. But nobody will give me a job. Wow. You know, nobody will give me a job. So that's why I went back to selling drugs. Nobody will give me a job, oh. and my kids need to be fed, so that's why I prostituted. Oh. So when it came down to it, so basically, the job is key. Oh. And it, it really is key. Um, you have education, you have all these different barriers to a person going back to prison. But employment is key, because you have to have a way to sustain yourself. And if a lot of people, when you have felonies, just recently, you were able to actually get food stamps. But just imagine prior to July 1st, if you had a felony, especially if it was a drug-related felony, you can't get a job, you can't get housing, you can't get food stamps. So therefore, if you can't get money, you don't, can't have shelter over your head, and you can't eat, how else do you expect a person to feed themselves and their children without committing a crime? And so a lot of people say it sounds like you're um, making excuses for it, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. Everybody is not made to say, I'm going to cut your grass, or I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the common solution is to provide people and give people chances, give them opportunities to tell you why they were stealing. Mm -hmm. And that's why I really love the whole ban the box purpose, because mm -hmm. it takes that box away from the application. It allows you to be able to get to the doors to tell a person that, yes, I have charges of armed robbery. I have charges for burglary and theft but I was addicted to crack for seven years. But if you'll notice and you'll see that in the past eight years, I've never been arrested again. Why? Because I'm now clean and sober and 
You know, if there's a pattern of why a lot of people do things and you're able to open up. You never know if the employer you've been dealing with may have had some issues or has a child with it. So that is what I do, where I come in. And a lot of times when I'm talking to employers, I do bring God up into the situation, especially if I know that there are employers who are faith, you know, faith-based people. Right. Because Jesus forgave us so many times over. Oh, my God. And yes. we proclaim to be a Christian yes. nation, yes. a nation of forgiveness. So how is that when you're not willing to forgive what this person done? Yeah. And so that is where I usually take it to a lot of people. So I want to tug at your heart. I want you to know that if you're saying that you genuinely are for forgiveness, why can't you forgive, you know, these, you know, the clients that we work with? And so that is what I want. I want to tug at the hearts. I want to tug at, you know, at your mind and your thought process to imagine what if this was your child? What if this was your son? What if this is you? Because sometimes, look the way things going now, anybody can get a record. <sighs> so you never know when you're put in a situation. You know, why should a person with a criminal record constantly be held, held down for something that they've done? You know, we've had a lot of people who've had children out of wedlock. How would you like if your whole life somebody talked about you when you had a baby when you were 13? How would you like it if someone constantly throw it in your face that you've been married five times? Ah. How would you constantly like that? And that's how it feels, that despite me going back to college, despite me being clean, despite me going to church, being active in my children's school, I'm trying to do good in my community, I'm still not worthy enough for a job. Mm. Is ah. God pleased with that? Ah, my and God. I don't believe he is. Oh, my God. Hold that for another <laughs> minute. We got to go to another commercial break. Oh, my God. You are really, really talking here. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just all into absorbing this. You are really talking things I haven't talk, thought about. Yeah. My God. But just come back. We'll be right back on a commercial break. Keep it locked with the Joneses. Ah. Uh. <laughs> 